What's going on, Algebra 1 class? I don't know why. I really don't. I don't know why this is important to me. That is just your it's, just, it's just my thing. That's anyway, all right, so check this out. Here's what we're going to be doing today. Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice? I cannot sound. All I hear is music, and I can't hear you. Music. How do you hear music? Hey, Mitchell. That mic is Well, put the mic on, or put the audio on, and can you hear me? It, it might feedback, but I'm just wondering how's the audio coming through. Check, check. Hello. Hello. It's, it's like it's like elevator music or holds music. It might be the phone. Oh. Cause it sounds like we're on the Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me now? All right, turn it off. Apparently, I had you on hold. That was on me. What's going on, Algebra One B students? How's it going with you? I'm sorry about the music. I have no idea uh, that that was going on. I I had to press a button on the phone, and then apparently it it it, it went. If you want to hear the music again, here one second. Oh, it's gross out. All right, we're done. We're done. Okay. All right. Anyway, um, so what do we got today? Well, started off with a uh, check this out. This is I found out. That twins have their own line of clothing so if you ever want to pick up one of those cool shirts that they make with this t-shirt with a pocket sewn on it it's pretty cool I think it's cool anyway shameless plug for uh, some students in our class just figured I'd give it all right so what do we got today well here's the deal I was all upset because no one was showing up for my class and I was like, where's everybody? It's like five minutes to class time starts and no one was showing up. And I was all like disappointed and upset and all haughty and whatnot. And what I was going to do is this, is I was looking at your plan and I have chapter 11 stuff due tomorrow, right? Yes. And the problem That's is, actually. the problem is chapter 11 stuff due tomorrow. I haven't even lectured on chapter 11 stuff. So I was thinking, oh, well, I'll give, I'll, I'll push everything back. What do you guys want? A week? A week. Forever. I push everything back a week. But then I was like, wait, where's everybody? And I was all upset because you guys didn't show up. And and so I was like, no, they're not going to get it. They're going to make it due tomorrow. I'm going to lecture on it. No one's going to show up. And then I'm going to make it due tomorrow. But turns out you guys were all in Miss G's class. It was her fault. So I'll push it back for a week for you. Present. Everybody happy? You can applaud. Go. Come on. Do it. There we go. Yay. Okay, fine. So let's do it officially right now. Um, so this is the first, what is a week from today? No, uh, the, this, tomorrow is the first. That's when it's going to be due. That's when it's supposed to be due. I'll make it due on the 8th. How's that? 8th, the 9th, and this one's a little weird. So we'll have to make this one due on the... 10th and the 11th. How's that? Actually, that doesn't make any sense because that's due on the weekend. Let's see it again. One second. Where's my... I am not. Not to speak for everyone. What is that? So you find new homework on the weekend? No. Okay, wait, wait. No, I'll change it. I'll change it. Hold on. We're talking about May, right? So the, we're talking about the 10th, 12th and 13th. How's that? Sure. 12th and 13th. And then I'll make this one the 14th and 15th. So, for those of you who are going to prom, you guys have nothing to do until next week. It's only two of us. Thursday. Haha. -ha. And Brandy's like, I'm going to prom. Mitch is going to prom. You aren't going to prom. Ha 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 Beat her up later. Go for it. All right. Um, so, here's what I'm also going to do. I think this might be a good present for you guys as well. I think that what I'm going to do is I wanted to cover quad... 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 by the time we finish um, with Algebra 1B. I think, I think that I'm going to, I might postpone those assignments, the 14 and 15, indefinitely. So I will postpone something indefinitely. Which means we won't cover those topics. It's either that or maybe we will cover those topics. I just won't make any homework as 
a sign for that. We're, we're like, I'll show it to you. You've seen it. That way your eyes have like recognized something like that. But you, you know, you won't be crazy busy with all that homework because I figured you guys have finals. Second gift. You can applaud if you want. Say yay. And yes, Brandy is here, but Mitchell is also here. All right, come on, come on, you guys. See, that's the thing is, when you guys are online, it's fault. tough for me to say, it's tough for me to say, like, do you guys understand that you guys, no one says anything, so, so say something to me. I need your response. Something, there we go, <laughs> something is good. Awesome. All right, so what do you guys think? You guys, you guys like that? I pushed your assignments back to next week, and then what I did was I pretty much cut out two chapters worth of homework. Yes. Indefinitely. Forever grateful. Sound good? My soul is yours. All right, fine. Because if you guys don't talk to me, then I won't know that you guys like this, and then I won't be, be doing any of this stuff. How's that? All right, so here's what I was thinking today is I'm going to hit a little bit of quad 10. We're going we're gonna to kind of wrap things up on that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start quad 11. I think that I can even finish quad 11 today. Or at least, yeah, I think I can finish all of quad 11 today. Sound good? So, pull out your papers, pencils, all of that kind of stuff that you printed out. No, then watch the screen. All right. Brandy? I think. I'm going to say no doodling and no texting. Even if it's to your mom. Okay, but what if she's like, I don't know telling me to call the cops because her office is being overrun. Mm -hmm. What do I do then? Then she can wait till 11. <gasps> Besides, if she called you to call the cops, why don't you just call the cops? Maybe... I don't know. Don't bother me. Oh, looks like I got a phone call. Like I'm all telling you guys, don't use your phones and I've got a phone call. I don't even know who it is. I'm gonna just get out. Hang up on that. I'm sorry. I'll call you back later, I promise. And then I'm gonna do this. And I'm going to there it is, my pen. Alright, quad ten. We're gonna do some warm-up stuff. Actually, we don't need the warm-up. We already did that. We're gonna do that. Um I remember covering this whole thing with you. But I figured what we'll do is why don't we do one of these problems? And I think one of these problems is actually your homework problem. Oh, this one actually looks fun. This is a bouncy ball homework, and this was actually, I think, assigned to you. Let's do it. Let's do it together. I think it's going to be fun. Oh, that one. Yeah, did you do it? No, you don't want me to do it for you? No, do it for me. Okay. All right. No, do it. do it. Well, let's do it together. How's that? I'm not doing doing things for you. I'm just doing, a, doing it with you. There we go. All right. So you guys ready? The bouncy ball. Below is a graph of the height of a ball drop four feet. Each time it drops, it loses some energy. Graph, study the graph and answer the following questions. Someone would call me again. If they call me twice, usually I, oh no, they just left the voicemail. I have like 50 voicemails that I didn't check. Anyway. We even leave voicemails. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No. Ball is dropped from four feet. So actually, let's take a look at this thing. What do you notice there are? There's a bunch of what? Parabolas. Parabolas. Why? Because each time it's in the air, and it's bouncing, it, it goes in the motion of a parabola. That's kind of how we got through the parabola things in the first place. Is anything you throw or football or take a piece of trash, throw it in the trash can, it made a parabola. So each time it bounces off the ground, then it's a parabola. Where did it start? What's our, my y-intercept? Four. Why is that? Because it started at four feet high. That's perfectly fine and totally understandable. Ted, you got it. Awesome. And also Mitchell. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's find the equation for each of these parabolas. Now, how would this parabola look? What are your thoughts? No, no, no. Let's put it. Let's let's, let's figure out the ver, the the vertex form of this, each parabola. You got a regular parabola, and how would I make that regular parabola look like the parabola you have there? This first one. Right here. It would be zero four. What does that mean? Zero x. Oh, zero x four. Yeah. The vertex yes. 
is at zero four. I totally agree. Yes. So what is the so all right, so check this out. If I'm gonna do Desmos and I wanna make a graph that looks just like this graph right here, how can I do that? I have y equals I have to have some kind of x squared in there. Right? But then what do I do? This graph right here doesn't look like this graph right here. All right, I need a negative. Where? Where do I need the negative? Yes. All right, I got a negative. Boom. Did it. What else? Plus four. Where do I put the plus four? Right in front of the x squared? No, in front of the two. In front of the two. Behind the two. What do you want? In front? <laughs> middle of the two? After the two? So to the right is Like that? Yeah. Oh, but you wanted a four, right? We just got it right there. Plus four. You take that thing, you move it up four. Look at this part right here. That is point one comma three. Let's check to see on our graph if that point exists. Uh, no. One comma three is not does not exist. It's almost like 0.25 comma 3. You see what I mean? Do you guys see what, what the problem is? This thing crosses at 1 comma 3. But the other one wants you at 0.25 comma 3. So what do I need to do? Uh, I think that Ted's got it. He's saying put a 4 in front of the four. x squared. So what did that do? Well, let's see. This is now 0.5 comma 3. So you got close. You moved it from crossing over here to crossing over here. So what are, what are, what are you suggesting? 6? Alright, let's see where that is. That's point four comma three. Let's go with eight. Did that do it? No, I need to get it right here. Let's do ten. Okay, fine. How's our fifteen? Is that it? Looks like it. Almost, almost. Let me go 16. I just want to try it. That's 176. That is 176. <laughs> I think 16 did it. Because it's at 0.25 comma 3. Booyah! Actually, you guys you guys totally told me what to do, but I'm, I'm just excited about what you guys did. Sound good? Yes. All right, so that would be the first problem. Do you guys understand what I did? Or or maybe maybe even better yet, we need to adjust it. Here, this might be more understandable. We need to adjust it so that it crosses the x-axis at 0.5. Right? Because this first parabola crossed the x-axis at 0.5. And of course, we're only taking the positive part of this thing because, you know, the graph kind of takes this positive bump right here. Is that good? Let's, let's, let's find the equation for the second parabola. It's not that bad. What do I do? I'll, I'll draw it right here. I've got x squared. Okay, there's my there's my general parabola, and what I want to do is graph a second parabola. And here's what the second parabola should look like. Right there. What are your thoughts? How do I mess with this thing? Well, it needs to be negative. Okay, it needs to be negative. That's totally true. Okay, it moves needs to move to the right, and it needs to move up. How much does it need to move up? Let's work on that first. One. One. It needs to move one up. And then Ted is suggesting that inside of those parentheses, we put a... No, I don't want the other parentheses there. What? I don't, I don't know what you're doing to me, Desmos. All right, here, I'll just do it like this. There. And then square that. And put a plus one. You want inside that parentheses you want a what minus 0.5? Yeah. 
fine, I'll do it. Minus 0.5. Did that do it? Minus 0.75. Why is that? That's where the vertex is. Sounds good to you? Sounds good to me. All right, now we need to make it skinny. How do, how do we make it skinny? Uh, negative, 17. negative 17. Close. I'm going to go with 16 again. That looks good to me. Does it look good to you? Dude, I'm making this parabola. You're making Well, I mean, you're... <laughs> you're okay, fine. All right, fine. Excuse yourself. You're making this parabola just by looking at this thing. I mean, we're looking at a graph and we're making up the equation. I think that's pretty awesome. How do I check it, Ted? Oh, you want me to scroll over this little dot and make sure? All right, so this crosses the x-axis at 1 comma 0. And 0.5 comma 0. That's good. These are good things right here. Sound good? All right, what's the next one? Let's make that little bump right there. All right, so it's going to be something like it's going to be something like this one, right? But it's going to be moved over just a little bit more, huh? How high is it going to go? Point one. Point. Point two five. Yeah. Right. So it goes up point two five. How much to the right do I have to move it? One point seven five. One? Let's try one. So we'll go one point seven five. Too far. Let's try this. No, not there. A little bit more. I say it's between oh I know what it is. It's one point one two five. Because it's halfway between 1 and 0.25, right? And that's 1.125. Well, what's 25 divided by 2? It's 12 and a half. So that's what I kind of figured is 12.5. And then you have a negative 16 out there. That's an interesting negative 16. But anyway, I think we're done. Dude, someone keeps calling me. Just go that weird little tiny awkward one that I don't even know what to do. Can I? Can I? Oh, no. It's just my voicemail. And then my battery's dying. I see what's going on. All right. So we got parabola one, parabola two, parabola three. All right, fine. We'll do a parabola four. Let's well, say, are we doing that weird, awkward one then? Just I guess if you want. That, that's just a weird one, though. Let's see. It went down by. All right. So, so how far? How how much do I have to bring it down by? It went down from four to one, from one to point two five. What's the next one going down? What do you think? How did I get from four to one to one point to one point two five? I divided by 4. So what is 0.25 divided by 4? And you guys don't need to answer that. I'm just going to have the calculator do it. It's 0 0.0625. Hey, we're, we're figuring out a pattern for this. We're good. All right. So that's one of them. What do, all right. How far are we moving it? It went from 0 0.75, 1 1.125. Huh. How do you do that? I wonder if, if you, 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 let's see, if this is 12.5, right, or 0.125, okay, wait, this is 0.25 plus 0.125, what is 0.125 divided by 2? Point three one two five. All right, let's try that. Hey, that's perfect. Oh, okay, I don't move the right. All right. Anyway, I'm done. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What, what are they asking? Is what similarities do you see between? The, and by the way, just or by the way, you might want to um, copy this down. Yeah. Because these are the answers to your to your questions right here. But then again, I'm also WebEx. I'm, I'm recording this. And then yeah, you but you really can't go into the archives. Why, you don't go into the archives? No. Why do I even record them if you don't go into the archives? Exactly. We've been wondering that for a while.
But isn't that awesome? That, I mean, like, we, we actually built this thing. I think it's cool. I don't think you guys think it's cool. I think Your enthusiasm is cool. Yes, we're going, we're actually going over, and I think I'm doing your homework for you. Oops. Oops. Actually, I don't think I'm doing your homework for you. You're basically doing your homework for you. I want to go over quad 11. Mitchell, give me your phone for the rest of the class. He's writing it down. Okay, fine. He's writing it All right. So, here's my question. What similarities and differences do you see between the four symbolic representations? There's a... There's what? There's a divide by four when it comes to the height. We figure that out. Okay? What else? They keep the negative 16. Yeah, negative 16. Interesting. All right, what else? What do you notice about the relationship between both the input and output coordinates of the four different vertices? Well, like you said, they divide by four, that kind of stuff. What distance between the x-intercepts, what is the distance between the x-intercepts of each parabola? Notice this is related to the time the ball is in the air when the ball bounces. Hmm. So what it's saying is, the, look at the distances between each parabola. And it was a little weird at first. And you, you think that there's no pattern, but there is a pattern. And it's related to this distance, to the length from here to here. This horizontal length from here to here. See, it's it, like, it's just half of this distance between here and here. And that's the time that the ball is in the air. I have a question for you. Will the ball bounce forever or will it eventually stop? It will eventually stop. Why? Well, in the real world, it would stop. I totally agree. However, in this mathematical world that we're, you know, like plotting this thing, I guess I could go on forever and have, you know, infinitely small little parabolas bouncing along. But I mean, in the real world, you bounce a ball, it will stop. You know what I mean? Because of friction and gravity and that kind of stuff. So I agree with you that it would stop. Although these things look like there isn't any friction that we really have to worry about. So it looks like it will bounce on forever, just have these little bounces forever and ever and ever. We can just keep on going and, you know, drive ourselves insane. By the way, I wanted to show you guys something that I think is really cool. Remember what I was telling you guys? Or actually, I think I keep telling my eighth graders about this, but look at this number 16 right there. Why do you think it's 16? See, often it's either 16 or you'll find that it's either 16 or 4.9. Weird. But there's something interesting about that. Let me show you something that I think will blow your mind. You ready? Here, wait. The 16, the 16 describes what? If I change that 16, it, it, it describes the curviness of it, right? How curvy sure. yeah. it is. Does that kind of make sense? Like. If it's 16, then it's a bigger, it's a, it's, it's a more extreme Jesus. curve. And if it's like one, then it's less of a curve. Does that kind of make sense? And if it's like point 16, then it's like almost, I mean, if I can, I can almost make it a straight line. And that's not technically a straight line. That just looks like a straight line, but when you zoom out, it still is a parabola. Do you see how it's a parabola? It's just, it's a really big parabola that when we, Zoom out enough, it looks like a straight line. Or when we zoom in enough, it looks like a straight line. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So, this number out front describes the curviness of this. But that curviness has something to do with the real world. And let me show you, because I think it's kind of cool. You guys ready? It's either, the answer is either 4.9 or 16. I'm going to show you guys something that I think is really cool. Acceleration of gravity. 
let me just go over to look at what the acceleration of gravity is. Oh, come on. I'm just showing it to you. It's not even something you got to do on your homework. I just did a homework problem for you to stop complaining. <laughs> All right, check this out. Look at this. Look at this. I want you to look here. Do you see the numbers 4.9 and 16? Do you see the numbers 4.9 and 16? Yes, you do. Where are they? I don't see it. Not on this page. Liars. What do you mean you see 4.9 and 16? Testing you. It was. I wasn't testing you. Ted's absolutely right. If you take these numbers that I have highlighted and you divide them by 2, 9.8 divided by 2 is 4.9. 32 divided by 2, 16. Mind blown, buddy! Apparently, when they were making this graph, they were measuring things in feet. Because 32 feet per second squared is the measurement of gravity, my friends. This is how it applies to life. Is that not cool? No, it didn't apply to the curvature of Earth. It applied to how strong gravity pulls things down at. And this number, which actually the way we describe it is that was that's always the A, right? This is the A, the number out in front. Yeah. Right? Whether or not it's in vertex form and standard form, it's pretty much the same thing. It's the A, right? And that describes how it how stretchy this thing is or how curvy this thing is. That A is related to gravity and it's related to gravity exactly half. It's half of what it, or yeah, it's half. So um, that A that we measure, the 16 is half of what gravity is. So if we want to figure out what gravity is, we can double it. In fact, what I'm doing with my students in eighth grade because um, I'm adding a new component that I didn't teach you guys when I taught you guys in eighth grade, is I, I'm using Tracker, we're graphing parabolas, and then we're figuring out what number goes in front of them, and we're actually measuring gravity based off of looking at Tracker videos. And you guys are thinking, oh, I'm glad he's no longer my eighth grade teacher. And we're like, ha ha, but I'm your algebra teacher. You guys thought you could get away from me. But you didn't, suckers. Oh God, no, no, I, I didn't want to. All right. Anyway. All right. So check this out. Let's do. Let's talk about quad eleven, which actually I think quad eleven is kind of fun. Of course, I think everything is fun. You guys hate it all. Let's do some graph matching. Let's try this one. Because this is kind of relating back to lines. Got it. Y equals, let's do this one. Let's do, let's do number four, just because I think four is actually the easiest one. What, what graph is that? What kind of graph is that? Is that a parabola? Yes. Mitchell says yes. Mitchell, you are wrong. Diamond, you're wrong as well. Which one are you pointing to? Number four. Oh. Is that a parabola? Well, that's not... Uh, all right, Mitchell and Diamond, you guys can be together and be wrong. Have fun. Because you're wrong. If it's not a problem, prob what is it? It's a line. Right, what, what do you guys remember about lines? Y equals, come on, there's got to be at least one equation you know. Y equals mx plus b. Yes, exactly, Diamond. It's a line because there's no x squared term. Y equals mx plus b. M is the what? Rhymes with, rhymes with, slope. Slope. Ah, well, slope. Good. And the uh, b is the rhymes with intercept. 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 Good. Awesome. <laughs> oh, no, no. no, he said intercept. I wasn't trying to make it difficult for you. It was hinting to the intercept. Yeah, yes, it was an inter it intercept hint. I need you guys to talk to me. Anyway, so what is the slope for this thing? Number four. Negative three. So it's going to be sloping down. 
And what is the intercept? Negative four. So what's the answer? Sweet. Its answer is B. For eleven x i. X i. Yeah. All right. We cool with that? So on here you got some lines. Can you graph these lines? Like one negative one third x. What would that look like? No, not negative one half x. So it's negative one third x. What would that graph look like? It would be it would be a line that slopes down, right? And it would go one across and three down. Nope. It would be one down and three across. Why did I say it wrong the first time? I said one across and three down. No, no, no. I was just, what I was thinking is, for some reason, I wasn't thinking, because slope is the rise over run. So you're telling me that the rise is negative one, the run is three. You guys get it? For some reason, I threw out to you guys it was the run over the rise, which doesn't make any sense. Slope is always rise over run. We cool with that? I mean, this is this is like Algebra 1A stuff, so. I didn't like how slope is rise over run because I was always taught younger when we did graphs and stuff that you have to get in the elevator before you can get up. So I didn't like the whole rise over run thing, so I found that to be the complete opposite of what I learned. I get it. All right. She was talking crazy, but I can understand where she's coming from. It's still crazy. I won't repeat what she said. All right, what about number six? Let's try this one. Let's talk about this graph first. Is this a parabola? Is this a linear graph? It's a linear. Yes, sure. This is a line, number six. The one I'm highlighting. No, 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 Ted's saying it's a parabola. Diamond's saying it's a parabola. Mitchell's saying it's the line. I want you guys to fight. I want you guys to fight. It's, it doesn't have an x squared. Yeah, it does. Oh, it does. It's a parabola. It's a parabola. <laughs> all right, exactly. All right, all right. So we got a parabola. What about, what are we going to do with this parabola? In fact, I want other people to answer because I've got Ted and Diamond jumping in. Kimilani, you're up. Adriana, you too. Paige, Shratton, Tatiana. Thomas, come on, jump in there. So what can I also say about this parabola? It's a parabola. It's sad and skinny. Sad and skinny parabola. The y-intercept is plus seven. Agreed. What does that negative one do? And I want somebody else to answer. Shh. Hey, shh. Kimilani jumped in, awesome. Sh sad and stretched. What does that negative one do? I specifically want somebody else to answer, but uh, and whoever has answered so far, don't answer. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that you guys did. What does that negative one do? You know, the negative one right by the x, x minus one, that one. What does that do? You guys know what it does? All right. It shifts it to the right one. Exactly. Very good. So which graph is that? Uh, it looks like H to me. Because it's to the right one, up seven, sad, skinny, upside down. That kind of stuff. Are we cool? All right. By the way, here's a trick one. What is F of X equals three? What does that look like? Ted's saying G. Diamond says G. Why is that? Because the line is straight. Well, I mean, just think about this. Like this. When we always tell you f of x, you're saying some function that depends on x, right? And you always tell me, okay, wait, you give me an x, I'll tell you what the y is, right? So here, let's try f of x equal three. I'll give you different x values and you tell me what the y value is, ready? What if x equals 
1. What is y equal to? 3. Okay, what is x equals 4? What is y equal to? 3. What, what is x equals 100? What is y equal to? 3. So all of those dots are just going to be at height equals 3, right? So that's pretty much going to be a straight line right over here. Yes. Does that make sense to you? That's why that graph is a straight line. I love it. Did we answer all of these and I just wasn't paying attention? No, we did not answer all of these. I kind of skipped these around. And Which ones did we answer? Uh, we answered one, two... No, we didn't answer one. We answered two, four, six, and eight. Cool. Well, what's two I actually four? didn't do that on purpose what's either. What's two and four? What was that established as? Uh, you can watch the archives and see. Ah, <laughs> 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 Yeah. All right. Anyway, it's because I love you. All right. <laughs> the scatter plot you below watch. shows the number of prob homework problems the student left uncompleted versus their corresponding quiz oh, score. It's me. So they have. Here's how many problems they left uncompleted. Here's what they got for their their quiz score. Actually, wait, wait. Here's the number of problems they left uncompleted. Here's what they got for the quiz score. So this problem student barely left any problems un uncompleted, and he got like an 80-something. That's a hard class. This person left 60 problems uncompleted. He got like a 5 on his quiz. Like 5%. Yeah, Mitch is saying, this graph is totally wrong. I don't do any of my homework, and I got great quiz scores. No, yeah, yeah, right. That's my life. Yeah. That's my life. Uh -huh. I don't do homework. Uh-huh. I'm so lucky to have a quiz instructor. The reason why... I'm in really well, but now I'm just like, Yeah, anyway, whatever. All right. The all archives, your archives are faulty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fine. I'll tell you what. I'll go back and give you the answer then. Thank you. Number two was... B, I think. No, it was D. Number three, and number four was B. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right, anyway. This <coughs> describe the relationship of the scores completed. So, what would this relationship look like? Is this a parabola or is this a line? Oh, it looks like a line. It looks like a line to me too. It really grows an even line, but a line nonetheless. Yeah, exactly. It's a line. We cool? You know what? I wonder if I can use snag it on one computer and snag it on the other. <laughs> that would just snag things up. You thought you were being funny, but I'm laughing at All right, draw the line of point. best fit. Do you guys know how to draw a regression line? A what? It's called a regression line. It's really easy. I'll show you. Let me open up Paint and let me open up Snagit, and I'll show you. It's very easy. Oh, like scatter plot lines. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. We're doing scatter plot lines. All right. So, do you have it printed out or no? No. Okay. You just have the tape paper. I've been taking fabulous gorgeous notes. All right, here. Let me just do this. I'm just gonna. Uh, Capture this image right here. I'm just gonna do one of these and hit one of these. I'm gonna capture that. Give me a second. Right now, what are you doing? Capturing right now as we speak. Then copy and paste that into Word or to Paint, and I'm gonna show you what I what a line regression line is. It's very easy. All right, you guys want to see a regression line? Does that look good? No. That's a regression line. It's that easy. You just draw a line through it. What? It's not touching the solid plot. Well, it doesn't have to. We're not connecting the dots. Okay. Let's this, this scatter isn't, plots connect the dots. This isn't fourth grade. What we're doing here is we're drawing a line that a best fit. And the way I kind of do this is, the way I look at this is I try to make sure that I have about as many dots on the bottom as I do on top and then I also try to make sure that I have it set up so that like I have the same amount of distance cumulative on the bottom as I do on top so it doesn't need to we're not yeah in fourth grade you guys connected the dots hey kids today we're gonna connect the dots. Grade, okay fine 
At four years old, you were asked to connect the dots. Yeah. <laughs> but what we're doing now is we are we are we're not connecting the dots. We're we're trying to find a line that kind of best matches this data. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Find the equation of this line that we drew. You know how to do that? It's very easy. It's not really that easy. It's easy if you guys remember how to do um, what you call it, how to do um, y equals mx plus b stuff. Well, then, then this homework's going to be tough for you. Best thing of the whole entire learning process. All right. Anyway, how to find an equation of the line? I guess I'll have to go over this with you. Fine, I'll do it. Where's my pen? Here it is. You guys don't know how to do this one. How do you find the equation of this line? I want to play. All right, here, I'll tell you what. We'll do it this way. Okay, you ready? There's a point. I, I want to take two points on this line. So identify two points. I actually like these two points right here. Are you on those? Yes. Yeah. These those two points. Are those are good. Sound good? All right. Now, I want to figure out what the y equals mx plus b is. I gotta figure out what m is. Do you know how to figure out m? That would be the slope, which is what? I'm sorry. What is the slope equal to? Run or run? Run or run? There we go. It's a rise over run. Now. If I want to go from this point right here and I want to go to this point right here, how much would I have to rise? 60. I'd have to rise negative 60. Right? Why is it negative 60? Why did I rise negative 60? Because I actually had to go down. So your rise was a negative rise. It wasn't really a rise, it was a fall. But it's rise over run, so I had to put negative 60. Are we cool? What's my run? How far across did I have to go? 80. So negative 60 over 80, uh, I can cancel out those things. 6 over 8, I can divide by 2, right? So that's negative 3 over 4. There's my m, negative 3 fourths. Sound good? What's my run? Or what, what is my b? What is the b value? It's 60. Awesome. Because it's where the thing crosses the y-axis, right? So y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 60. Was that hard? You guys remember how to do that? Yeah, 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 I don't know. Do you guys, if I gave you a line, can you find two points on it? Can you yeah. tell me the slope? Sure. And then after you find the slope, can you tell me what the intercept is by just looking at that line? Sure, this is a lot easier than parabolas. Is it? Well, that's why we taught it to you a whole semester before we taught you parabolas. Sure. Because lines tend to be easier than curves. Make sense? What's your thoughts? I like parabolas more. Yeah, I like parabolas too. What does the slope of your line represent in context of the homework problems left uncompleted in the score? Notice how the, there's a negative slope. What does that represent? Okay, yeah. Or maybe the opposite of what Mitchell said. Because Mitchell said, the less homework you miss, the better your score. Or maybe the more homework you miss, the worse your score. Same, same kind of deal. Sound good? Yes. All right, cool. We good with that? That's that whole problem right there. All right, draw the line of best fit for this thing right here. Actually, you know what, I don't want to draw the line of best fit. What would that line of best fit look like? You tell me. Straight across. It'd be straight across, like literally straight across like that? No, no. diagonal. Okay, so it'd be some kind of like line that has a positive slope and all of that kind of stuff. Sound good? All right. Next one. 
And by the way, I'm looking for other people to answer this one. Look at this graph. What would that line of best look or fit look like? And what are we looking at here? Number of motorcycle fatalities versus percent of drivers over the age of 40. So I guess if there is 50% of drivers over age of 40, this is how many fatalities they suffer that year. Versus if there's 10% drivers over age of 40, that means there's more drivers under the age of 40. So they die the most. So younger people die the most. Why do they choose 40? Is 40 like the midlife crisis kind of thing? Yeah. That's when everyone buys a motorcycle? All right, fine, whatever. Let's take this thing. Let's graph it. Or let's, let's pull this graph. Are you going to get a motorcycle, Mitchell? When you're 40? And you're balding? Mitchell's going to be balding in 40. Is your dad bald? Is your mom? Well, I mean, your mom. No, I mean, but, but you get it from your mom's side, I think. Anyway. All right, what, 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 what is that going to look like? I almost gave you the answer. I pretty much did. What, what, what kind of line does that look like? Okay, wait, I want somebody else to answer. Please, come on. Kimilani, Kimilani, you can do this. I know you can. Ignore what Ted just said on the on the web on the chat. God damn. Because it's not wrong, wrong, but it's just saying. It's a problem. Exactly. Very good. Awesome. And thank you, Ted, for spamming it out of the, the chat bar. But yes. Just think of the scroll bar. It is a parabola. I know there is such thing as a scroll bar and you just look up at what Ted said. But I wanted somebody else to say, no, 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 that's cool. I mean he was just excited. He's excited about learning this stuff. Do you guys see this parabola? You guys understand this thing? Like, yes, that is a problem. If I tried to, let's draw a line of best fit, you guys. Wait, did that work? No, it didn't work. Because it doesn't look like, I can't draw a line that makes it look like John. So what I can do is I'll draw, can I draw a curve like this? I wonder if I can do this. That's pretty good. Something like that. Oop, oop, oops. Okay, wait. Make sure I draw in a curve. Do this. Pull this straight down. Kind of like that. Do you guys agree? It's probably a little wider. I probably should make a nice problem. But it looks good. Sound good? All right. So, let's see. What else are they asking us to do? Oh, is that all we had to do? We just had to draw lines on it? Oh, what type of function does B represent? There's B. It's a parabola. parabola. There we go. Boom. Growing broccoli. A scatter plot. Below is a scatter plot with the amount of bushels versus the draw the parabola that best fits this line. It's a sad parabola. Identify two points on the x intercept and the y intercept. Blah, blah, blah. Identify both points. You know what? I'm tired of doing these can problems. They're dumb. Let's do this. Let's go back and play some more Angry Birds. Actually, you know what? Let's not play Angry Birds. Let's analyze Angry Birds. And then what I'll, I'll do is I'll figure out the... I'll answer all of their questions using Angry Birds. Give me a second. I'm going to switch over to my mental break and play some Angry Birds. Play, not analyze? Uh, I, I will play in the form of analyzing. Like Give me a second. Hold on. All right, let me share my desktop over here, and I think that I pull with package one on the program is one and turn it again back. So let's do this. We'll pull open Tracker. You guys seen Tracker before? And then you know what we'll do is we'll pull up in different data. You guys want to do Angry Birds? You guys want to do something else? Flappy Birds. Flappy Birds? Can we play that online? Yeah. Oh, but I can't record a... I still have the app, and I'm never erasing it from my phone. Why? What's the deal with Flappy Birds? Wait, have you, you 
never played Flappy Bird? No, I've never understood you want to play what. Real fast? I don't want to play it. It's on my phone. Come on. I know, I know, I know. You're all excited about Flappy Birds. I don't want to play it. I, would, I what I want to know is. Big deal. No, not even that. I don't really care. Um, here, let's do this. I'm going to track this Angry Bird again. And by the way, for those of you who don't know what's going on, I'm not playing Angry Birds right now. We are not taking a break. I'm just kind of uh, showing you guys something because I'm tired of doing their canned things that I can't necessarily fit graphs to. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, track this thing. You guys remember Tracker? All right, so here's what I got. I'm gonna put a X, X, Y coordinate. I'm gonna put a calibration stick. I actually calibrated the stick, this, this, uh, this, what you call it? Slingshot to be about 17 feet tall. Crazy, huh? 17 feet. That makes these birds like two and a half feet tall each. Those are giant birds. I mean, yeah, you're like basically shooting toddlers at people, which I know is morbid and crazy, but it's crazy. Anyway, let's uh, create a track, create a point mass, track this thing. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fast forward it. Okay. That's the one I want, I'm gonna back. Give me that guy right there. Do you guys, you guys have seen this before, right? Tracker. I want you to find that picture and that thing. I want you to auto search it. Now I'm auto tracking that whole thing. Because what I'm doing is I'm pulling data from here right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use their their data that they're giving me anymore. I'm, I'm going to make up my own data. So there, I did it. I made my, my own data. All right. Control A. Control A. Control C. Let's bring it over to Drive. And let's create a new spreadsheet. I could just go into the track the parabola thing, but we'll do it from scratch. Create a new spreadsheet. I'm going to copy and paste all of that data right here. And cell A2. Copy paste. There we go. All right. So this was the time, this was the X, and this was the Y position of that parabola. And if I were to graph those, what would I see? Well, let's take a look. Let's graph And I want this thing right here. I'm gonna scatter plot up right there. There we go. Awesome. All right. So the x data is what? If I were to if I were to draw a regression line to fit that thing, what would it be? The blue one. Does that look like a parabola to you, or a What? Line. It's a line. There we go. Awesome. It's a line. And then if I were to draw something that fits the red one, what would that look like? That's a problem. Now I have a question for you. Since all of you took basic physics, is that true? You guys took yeah. basic physics. And you've used tracker. Here's my question. Why is the blue line a straight line and why is the red line a parabola? This is what I'm teaching my eighth graders. I'm wondering if you guys can figure it out. I mean, and if not, then I'm going to be like, dude, what did you learn in basic physics? Not to say that, I mean, I think your basic physics teacher is awesome. Because why there's a weak line with X, you keep on going on the same thing. Same. No, I think the diamond's kind of got it. Why is the height and gravity is at play? Yeah, that's exactly. The y is the vertical direction. Gravity acts in which direction? It acts down. Well, it acts vertically, doesn't it? Down, which is the negative version of vertical, right? Does it act forward or back? Does gravity like pull you forward? 
No, we don't lean forward and that kind of stuff. Gravity doesn't pull us forward. Gravity pulls us down. So that's why in the X direction, you're going at a constant velocity. Does that make sense? You're constantly changing your position as a function of time, but you're not like speeding up or slowing down. You're just going at a constant velocity. Assuming, of course, we don't have air resistance and all of that kind of stuff. And then the, for the y direction, you're going at a par parabolic motion, which basically means your y velocity is changing. What is that constant velocity, by the way? I'm just curious to know if you guys know that. Yo, what's up? Wouldn't the blue line also be the starting tangent line? It is, it is, but it, it doesn't necessarily need to be that. It could be, it could look something totally different. But I see what you mean by tangent lines. We'll get there one day. Actually, we won't get there, but if I can teach you calculus one day, I'd be very excited to teach you about tangent lines. Anyway, um, if you found the slope of that blue line, that is the velocity in the horizontal direction that you're moving. But to be honest with you, we're not interested in lines. I want the parabola, so I'm going to delete all of that data right there. Delete. Sound good? I'm just like, I'm over that data. I want this data. In fact, I'm going to delete that whole column right there. All of you delete. Everything. Delete that column. All right. So what am I looking at here? It's now the new blue line, which is a parabola. Cool? Let's draw a line of best fit. Actually, you know what? Better than a line of best fit, what I want to do is I want to match up a parabola to that thing. Sound good? And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do this. I'm going to go A, H, and K. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a parabola, and I'm going to try to match it up to make it look just like the other one. And I'll show you what I'll do. Is I'm basically going to try to figure out what the values of A, H, and K are in order to make this thing fit. Now let's see. Um, I'm going to call that Y guess. So this is my parabola, and the parabola, the equation for that is um, a, so that would be equals to dollar $E dollar one. And by the way, you don't need to do this particular part in your thing. I'm just showing you guys something. So just watch what I'm doing. You don't even need to understand what I'm doing right now. So let's see, it, it's got um, x minus dollar e dollar two squared plus dollar e dollar three. What is dollar? All right, here, let me just put in some numbers here. Doesn't know what dollar e dollar one is. What's wrong with dollar e dollar one? Dollar e dollar one. Oh, I see. Times. Okay, good. Awesome. By the way, none of you asked. Are you guys going to ask me what are the dollars for? Or you guys don't care? You guys don't care? Seriously? You guys, you guys just be like, I don't care. No, all I did was I graphed here. All I did was I did the vertex form. I did the vertex form of a parabola. It's this one right here. A, H, X minus H squared plus K. But what I told the thing to do is I said, all right, I want you to use this as A, this is H, and this is K. And the reason why I have the dollar on that is because as I drag this thing down, I want you to change this value, but I want you to always keep these values to be the same, A, H, and K. Sound good? So let's mess with this thing, and I want to make this red graph look like the blue graph. Sound good? All right, how can I do that? If I have A equals 1, it would look like a parabola. It has to be negative. I agree. All right. 
What about K? What do I need to do for K? Where's the vertex of this guy right here? Where's the highest point? Looks like 260, huh? It looks like this value right here. All right, so I'm gonna copy and paste that and make that my K. In fact, what I'll do is I'll take that same spot and I'll make this my H. There. Now all I gotta do is adjust this A value to you know, accurately fit this thing. So I say it's, is it negative one? Let's try negative four. Okay, that's not gonna work. Negative what? 60. 60. All right, let's try something else. Negative 90. Ooh, we're getting close, aren't we? Let's try another one. 110. Oh, negative 110. No, oh, not 440. 110. Oh, that's almost perfect. Awesome. So apparently I screwed up with this thing because technically this should be negative 9 point, or this should be negative 30 or 16, actually. So I must have messed up somewhere in this thing. You guys see what I'm doing here? The reason why I think it's negative 16 is because, I mean, if you think about that, isn't that A supposed to be half of gravity? In what world is gravity 228 feet per second squared? Obviously in the Angry Birds world. What did I do to screw up? Oh, I see what I did. My calibration stick said that that was 100 feet tall. No, I'm sorry, that's only 17 feet tall. Let me just recopy my and paste my data. That's all right with you guys. In fact, I'll just recopy and paste the Y data. Whoa. Now I didn't mess up. Watch. Negative 16. Oh, oops. What happened? Oh, oops. No, no, no. I know what I did. It's right here. That's the Y data. There we go. Yeah, I did mess up. You're right. So at, where's the highest point that it reaches? Right about at 40. 40. No, I'd say it's 44. Right there. Okay. So my highest point is there. And my lowest point, or my, that value should be there. And then this, I need the red graph to look like the blue graph. So let's make that negative what? So I was a little bit off because I don't think it was exactly 17 feet tall, but look at that. Isn't that cool? In fact, I had another fellow nerd calculate how tall is the slingshot in Angry Birds. This is a good friend of mine. His name is Rhett Allen. I've actually talked to him a couple of times. He is a professor over at Georgia Tech University, I believe, and I totally got that wrong. Where was he a professor at? Uh, Southern, Southeastern Louisiana University. Please don't tell him I said that he was Georgia Tech. He's going to be like, Georgia Tech. Yeah, because you guys totally talk to him all the time. Absolutely. Right. But anyway, he used Tracker, and he calculated out Taylor Swift's stunning what? No, I was. What, what happened? Hold on. Comments for the start are not closed. No, I, I want. I want. I don't want tracker. I want that that thing. Where's the Angry Birds physics of Angry Birds thing? There we go. He calculated out that that. Oh, it's only five meters tall. Oh wait, wait. He's calculated out to be five meters tall. Five meters to feet. 16.4. So it's a little bit less than 17 feet tall. Technically, it's more 16 feet, but 17 feet. 
Okay, fine, fine. I'll tell you what. If we change this number over here to 16.4, what was it? 16.404 or 16.404? 16 16.4042. Let's try that. Did he get exactly five meters? Let's see. He got... What, 4.9. So it's 16 points. Zero seven six one. All right, so we'll take that data, put that there. Sixteen point zero seven six one. All right, then we'll take this data copy and paste it into our spreadsheet right there and then we gotta dial that thing back just a little bit where is the highest point that it went, went up to it went up to 41 yep oh look at that my friends it's not exactly. Fine, let's make it more exact. 16.5? What do you guys want? 17? There we go. So let's ask, let's answer some questions about this. And what are we gonna answer? Well, we're gonna answer the questions that they gave us in the in the quadratic handout. I know, I know. You guys can keep going and try to make the numbers more accurate. I know it's fun. It's fun, isn't it? You guys are like, oh my gosh, so fun. it is fun. And I'm, I'm being tricked. I think I'm being tricked. I'm being tricked into thinking that this is fun. Identify the two X coordinates of the parabola. Fine. What are the two X intercepts of the parabola? Identify them. Uh, look at the parabola. Where's the parabola? Stratton left the meeting. All right. Where's the X intercepts? Where does this thing cross the X axis? I would say a 30.2, 30, 30 because look, it's positive here, it's negative here. That means somewhere in between here and here, it crossed the x-axis. Does that make sense? Because over here it's a positive y, and over here it's a negative y. Actually, yeah, there and there. So I would say that that's, it's about 30.2, and where is it over here? Well, it's probably somewhere about, I'd say less than 27.2 because it crossed the x-axis somewhere around here. Sound good? You guys like? Awesome. Let's keep answering their questions. Use the x-intercept to find another point and write a symbolic representation of your quadratic. Yeah, we already wrote a symbolic representation. Can we go over, over number two on page nine of quad 10? Okay, that's a lot of questions, but yeah, sure, I can try to figure that out. All right. Uh, use the x-intercept and another point to write a symbolic quadratic function of best fit. We really did that because we know that our quadratic function looks like, hmm, how can I do this? Um, x, right. I don't want to do, I want to do, uh, Okay, latex inversion. <coughs> you guys don't know what LaTeX is, and you guys think, wow, what kind of kinky stuff is Mr. Belding into? Because what is he talking about, latex? No, it's, it's, it's mathy stuff. I'm into math, okay? All right, anyway, I wanna code it. All right, here we go. So I want, um, what we did was we ended up doing the vertex form, which is y equals um, a x minus h squared plus k. Convert that for me. Right, there's the equation. a x minus h squared. Okay, 
But our A was what? Our A was this number, negative 17. Our H was that, and our K was that. So all I gotta do is plug that in. So H was this, K was this, and A was this. We put negative 17. So that, my friends, right here, is our vertex form. Sound good? I just got that straight off of the data. That's pretty much how you do this entire packet. I think that that's pretty much the rest of it. Now, before class ends, someone wants me to do a problem two or a number, whatever. Okay, fine, I'll take a look at it. Let me just read this to make sure that we've covered all of the pieces. Uh, look at the scatter plot. Draw a line of parabola of best fit for the scatter plot. By the way, how can you do this without the computer? You just take out a piece of pe a pencil and you draw a parabola that kind of matches that thing. That's the best you can do. Yeah. For what amount of rainfall would you expect the crop to fail and grow completely? Approximately how much of your crop would you expect if your growing season had 60 millimeters of rainfall? Okay, all right, here's what's going on. So check this out. If you have rainfall, here's how much your crop growth you'll have. So if I only have 200, what is it, 200 millimeters of rainfall, I only have 6,000 pounds per acre, or about there. Sound good? If I have 500 millimeters of rainfall, I'll have up almost 8,700 pounds per acre of crops. Does that make, kind of make sense to you? If I have more than 500, I'll actually have less crop growth. What do you think that is? You're overwatering the plants. Well, I mean, you're not doing it. I guess God is kind of doing it. I mean, it's kind of like, too much water, dude. Okay, Brandy's looking at me like, all right, fine. It's not God, according to Brandy. It's, I didn't say a word. You, you, I implied words with my face. You said it with your eyes. Anyway, too much rain, which there's nothing you can do about as a, as a farmer. But hey, there's too much rain. So hopefully, if you're a praying man, then you would pray for exactly 500 millimeters of, of stuff. Or you, if you're a not praying man, then you would just kind of hope for 500 millimeters of rain. Is that is that politically correct with everyone in the room? Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. So, at what point, approx or at what amount of rainfall would you expect the prox the crops to completely fail? Do you guys understand the question? Can you repeat the question? You're not even paying attention. What are you doing? Going stuff. Stuff. Stuff that doesn't include math. I'm My question is this. It's exactly the question on the page. For what amount of rainfall would you expect the crops to grow or, or to fail completely? 500. You think that if there was 500 millimeters of rain, the crops will fail completely. All the crops will die. No. No. Diamond saying no. That's right, Diamond. Beat him up. And Diamond's retort would be? What are your thoughts, Brandy? When will the crops all die? Think as a farmer. A flood and or a drought. Way after a thousand, or drought, which would be at around. How can you have negative rainfall? Drought. It doesn't rain at all. That would still be zero. There's there is no negative rain. That'd be like, that'd be like, I didn't say negative, he did. So. Okay, fine. That, that would be like the cloud sucking water out of the ground. I, I guess, maybe that's evaporation. I'm pretty sure that's a thing that happens. Okay, fine. All right, fine. I guess. All right. Okay, so if we have a flood, then all of your crops will be, the rainfall will be way out here, and all of your crops will be way out here. Does that make sense? Or if we have a drought, then it's pretty much zero or below. 
then your parabola will probably end up capping off from there. Does that does that make some sense? Is essentially all they're asking, like that is saying, is that's just kind of a not a complicated question, but it's kind of a tricky way of asking you what are the x-intercepts. I don't like tricky versions of things. It's not really a really tricky version because when you think of the x-intercepts, you think of okay, x-intercept is when the y equals zero, right? Yes. Y equals zero is when zero crops grow, right? In this in this scenario, you're not even looking at the graph. You don't even know what it looks like. Yeah, and see, this is the crop growth, and then you got zero, and you got zero. Give me your computer. And your phone. My phone's on the floor. Computer and phone. Now. I have nothing to touch on my phone. Actually, I, I just need the, the phone. The phone is so much more valuable to you. All right. But I wasn't even touching it. I know. I know. I know. I know. We only got ten more minutes. Anyway. I'm going to go over back to quad 10. So are we cool with quad, quad 11? You guys got it? You guys understand it? Do you guys think it's hard? It's not really that hard. All right. Diamond wants me to go over and do more homework for her. Fine. What is it? Page what? Nine? Problem two? Is that what you need to do? Problem nine. Page, problem, page two, number two. Number two, page nine. All right. Iago owns... A hotel called Iago's Inn. Are we in Aladdin here? Is this what's going on? Definitely. All right, anyway, whatever. All right, he's considered giving up a group weight for a conference of Shakespearean ads. I thought we talked about this problem. The regular price for a room is $120 for each room rented, and the price decreased from $4. Below is a graph received of the renting rooms. Recall that the revenue means the amount of money you make. What is the maximum revenue that Iago can receive under this plan? So, how many people does he need to have in order to receive the amount of maximum amount of revenue? Do you understand what that question is? Really what they're asking for is when they talk about maximum, they're asking you for the, so it's going to be? Vertex. Vertex. There we go. So where is the vertex? That's what it's asking you for. It's at the tippy top. That's By the way, this is 10, this is 15, 20, and 25, 30. These are... The tippy top is at 15, comma... 15, comma, whatever that is. I can barely read it on that graph. Hopefully I can zoom in, maybe. Oh, there we go. 750. This is 600. Then be 750. This must be 800. So this would be 60, 70, 80. So that would be 780. So, 15 comma 780, so how much money can this guy get? What is the maximum amount of money this guy can get? Hands down. What? $780. 780, why isn't it 15? What was 15? The number of rooms rented, right? Right, so you need to know which is which. I was told it wasn't in $780. That would be yeah. unfortunate. <laughs> you rented out 780 rooms, you made 50 bucks. That would be really sad. Um, how many rooms should he rent in order to receive this amount, most amount of revenue? Okay. 15, exactly. And if he, if he, why, 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 why does the amount of revenue go down if he rents out more? Because then he has to, like, you know, pay for that and give them stuff. And well, no, because he's offering this deal of Shakespearean act actors. Yeah. And he's saying four four dollars off so actually all this problem is is asking you where's the vertex that's all it's asking you and then it's kind of asking you not in a complicated way but just asking you in a more because because I love well no no but here's the thing here's the thing you guys are telling me wait I hate it when they ask it to me in a confusing way why don't they just tell me where's the vertex and then after that why don't they just tell me the x-intercepts and what I'm telling you, what I've been telling you this entire time is that math applies to your life, right? I've been telling you to do that, that since the beginning of time. Since you've known me, I've been telling you that math somehow applies to your life, right? Yes. The problem is when you see math in real life, you're going to be like, they're going to ask you questions like, what is the highest that the ball reach? Because the world, the real world, doesn't just kind of like ask you hey, questions in, what is the vertex? Does that make sense? No, it's like, where's the tippy top? Yeah, they're just going to ask, what is the tippy top? 
And then you have to translate that in your head to me. Oh, what that means is where's the vertex? I can find that out. I can figure that out. The world doesn't give you problems. Your boss, if you ever use math in your workplace, which you will, your boss isn't going to say, all right, I want you to graph it out. I want you to find the vertex. I want you to find the X and Y intercepts. He's going to say, how much, what he's going to say is, how much do I set this rate at in order to maximize the amount of money I get to make? Because I am a greedy Uncle Scrooge, and you work for me, and I'm trying to make, or even better yet, why don't you be the greedy Uncle Scrooge? Why don't you be Iago, and you get to own the hotel, and then you have to decide, well, here's what I would decide. You say, hey, there's Comic-Con events, or like uh, Comic-Con going on in town. There's going to be a bunch of people here. I'm going to give a special rate to those people who go to Comic-Con. So now you have to estimate, how many people do you, I think I can get into my hotel? Hmm. I think I can get, you know, like 40 people from that Comic-Con convention. So you set it up so that you offer these group rates so that everyone wants to take it, but you set it up so that your maximum revenue happens at where? At around 40 people. Because that's how much you guessed, right? Now, Say that there's this huge influx and there's like this whole new group of nerds because like the newest series of, I don't know, what what is a nerd thing? It's the newest Star Wars just is going to come out. So, oh, so the, you got all of these fake nerds coming in and then so then they, they're all come in and, and they, you have way too much, way over 40. Well, you're actually going to be losing money. So, you know, I mean, so what you have to do is you have to figure out these balances. But the problem is... They're not going to present problems to you where they're going to be like, where's the vertex? You're going to have to look at this and you're going to be like, hmm, if I were to graph this, this would look like a parabola. I want to make sure my vertex is right where, you know, I'm guessing the amount of people are going to come in. Because that's what will get me the most money. And most of you guys are like, I don't care about math. I don't care about some applications. But I do care about money. And Comic Con, and I might even own a hotel or something like that. And Ted wants me to look at some video, which I'm very skeptical Don't of looking at Ted's video because it's always probably going to take me to a picture of him eating bacon. But anyway, class is finished. It is now ten fifty seven. I will talk to you later. Finished quad eleven for me. No excuses because you had your homework pushed back an entire week. So get me quad 10 and work on quad 11. Does that sound fair? Yep. Sorry. Yes, of course. Tell you what, Ted, I'll look at it after I'm done, after I close, stop the archive and close the class. All right. Okay, talk to you later. Goodbye.